Hi there, and welcome to my channel. I'm so fortunate, just back from a few weeks in a lovely Costa Rica in Central America, and like to share with you some of my experiences. Costa Rica is a top place, as I hope you'll see, and I had a lot of fun there, but the trip was not without its anxieties, as I'll explain in a few moments. In the meantime, here are a few stills from the trip. I'll add some more later on. Lindsay and I did the first part of our trip through a tour company called G Adventures, which we hadn't used before, starting in San Jose and travelling in an anti-clockwise direction around the country, and afterwards we caught a bus to Tamarindo in the northwest coast for a few days' relaxation. There was little to see from the plane apart from the wing, because we'd booked cheapo seats, but once we got into San Jose and visited the market, it became obvious that Costa Rica had a lot of unusual things to offer. I'm pretty sure that none of these were coca leaves, but we didn't sample any. San Jose is a bustling city, and for the most part we felt quite safe there, especially during the daytime. Ok, I'm not going to describe everywhere we went and all that we saw, so I've added some captions so that you can identify places, but I would just say that the Museo de Oro was one of the best museums I've ever been in. Amongst other things, it managed to present an excellent perspective on why this part of the world became so important during the Spanish Empire. What I want to do instead of a blow-by-blow -blow commentary on the trip is to talk about some anxieties we had before and during the holiday. The first big one was to do with Covid. Would we even be able to get out of the UK? Would we get into Costa Rica with our vaccination certificates? Or might they change the rules? Will we get back into the UK afterwards, or would the travel rules change? Would we be able to fill in all the online forms and apps and health passes that we needed, and which you can't even start filling in until a few hours before travel? And what would happen if we caught Covid while abroad? It turned out that one of the group, Paula, who joined our group after travelling through Guatemala, had caught it there along with six others of her previous group and each had had to quarantine alone until they could produce a negative result. So this was a relevant concern. Everything eventually turned out okay, and what we found was that in Costa Rica they were very good with sticking to Covid rules. Everyone in our group wore masks while on the various buses, we wore them in indoor places, and often our temperature was taken when going into shops. The Costa Ricans wouldn't even allow you on their local buses without a proper mask, and not just a scarf, and you had to wash your hands and use hand gel before going into restaurants.
the big Samir. Uh, oh, hey, Woo! <laughs> <laughs> So we felt pretty safe from this perspective. Unfortunately, no one caught COVID in our group. There was a bit of a flap at one point with the online forums because it seemed you couldn't check in with BA before you completed the awful Verifly app. And he couldn't complete the awful Verifly app before you completed the health pass. And he couldn't complete the health pass before you checked in with BA. Or something like that. I forget the details. But we managed to do everything eventually. The other anxiety was to do with whether we were too old to join this adventure group. I'd watched some YouTube videos of similar trips and it seemed that everyone on them was much younger. There are a lot of activity schedules throughout the 15 days, as you can see, plus a lot of travel, some early starts and late finishes, and we didn't want to let the side down. I'm now 70 and have at least one friend who's only a bit older than me who definitely wouldn't cope with even the technology of travel nowadays. All the apps and online forms and QR codes and stuff you have to do with mobile phones. And there's always a the feeling that one day you'll no longer be up for all the physical activities. But will you realize before it's too late? Every day there were various tours and activities to choose from, including early morning sessions, kayaking, swimming, walks, bird watching, horse riding, and then night walks, and after this the evening socializing and, you know, of course, drinking and eating. And then there was a zip lining schedule for Monte Verde, the longest and highest zip lining in Central America. And I'm terrified of heights as well. Would we survive? As it turned out, we managed to do everything except the optional canyoning, which we left to the youngsters. And while we may not have gone late night dancing with them, we were up for every early morning walk, which some of the youngsters missed because they were still in bed. As for the zip lining, you'll see all of this in a few minutes. Okay, we're going to go horseback riding today. This is so 
pillar. And we're putting the Sonia on pillar. One more thing that might have gone wrong was with group dynamics. These tours put 16 strangers together for two weeks in close company and I've been on trips in the past where the group didn't work that well together. But our Costa Rica group was wonderful. I very much enjoyed the company of every single one of them. Even that chap from Ardesia. They were a great bunch. The group bonded well and we all had lots of laughs and I learned so much from all of them. Thanks, Chicos. One of the reasons the group worked well was because they had a very good G-Adventures guide called Dorian. He worked so hard, he was up early with us early birds and he was still going late at night to keep an eye on the youngsters when he went out. He also made hundreds of arrangements and made sure that everyone was happy. The other reason was because Costa Rica is such an entertaining place to be a tourist so it's difficult not to be happy there. It's very colourful, with a good climate, and the locals were, without exception, friendly and helpful. Well, apart from one grumpy guard at one of the national parks. And then, as you'll see later, it was a very romantic and special moment on the beach towards the end of the trip. OMG! Here comes a zip lining bit. Okay, that wasn't too bad, that was the first sip. That's just to get you used to the experience, but keep watching because it gets worse and worse, believe me. I didn't actually know there was a safety cable holding her up there in case I fell. It's Lindsay's time, but this is still just the easy stuff.
There are seven zips until it gets scary. This is still just easy stuff. I think it's after this next sip that there's the uh, first of the knee tremblers. Okay, so you start wondering why all these people are at uh, this station, and that's because the next bit is the abseil. Now it starts to get uh, worse. This is the last place that you can cut out and quit. And if you don't quit, you've got some long zips ahead of you. This is one of the two very long Superman zips, and you'll see why. Oh. 
and now the final and worst bit, the Tarzan Swing. Oh, here's the lovely romantic bit coming up. Watch this. After the end of the group tour, we went to Tamarinda for a few days relaxation. Thanks for watching, see you next time. <laughs>